Now we are going to cover the concepts of users in PARS, users and sessions. Now all that a user is in PARS is a special type of class. Let me show you with some code. Now I've already bootstrapped a basic JS bin with the PARS initialize and the PARS server URL. And now I'm going to go through the process of creating and signing up a user. So we create an instance of a user by calling new and then parse.user. And just like any other instance in parse, we can just use user.set and set some key value fields. I'm going to set a username. And for this username, I'm actually going to use, well, an email address. And I'm also going to set a password. Let's call it password01. And I'm actually also going to set an email, which I'm just going to set to asim at Codecraft TV. So with users, these first two fields, the username and password, these are required. When creating a user object, you must at least have a username field and a password field. You can optionally have an email field, and that's useful for other things later on, which I'll show you. Now, quite often these days when signing up to a website, people typically just provide an email as their username or as their unique identifier and a password. And you can do that with PARS. You just have to provide the email address as the username. And if you want to set it also as the email, you can set it as the email. Okay. And you can set other fields, uh, any fields that you want on the user object just by using user.set. So you could set foo bar. You could treat it like any other instance of a class in pars. But I'm gonna set a bit more information. I'm gonna set a name. Oop. What happened there? There we go. That's Amy Hussain. And let's set a gender. Male. Let's do lowercase. To match convention. Okay. So the first two fields, username and password, these are required. The third one is optional and with some extra settings on the server side, you can make this trigger off various other activities. But then you can add any other field that you want to a user object, just like you could do with any other PARS object. Now, typically with PARS, you might think we would use user.save. But with users in particular, we don't use the save method to create the user. Instead, we use the sign up method. Okay. And just like the save method, the sign up method returns a promise. So we can use then. And then function success is user. Let me put that on the next line. Then function success user and function error uh, okay actually let me bring that back up there again okay and then let's just type in here console.log signed up and then let's just print out the user object and now that should be all we need to do so if i just refresh the page just to make sure we're we're loading up the right data, the right code, and I'm going to hit run. Okay, so now it's signed up, and it's signed up something called the user object, and this is the ID. So now if we look in the PARS dashboard, and again, let me refresh the page so we make sure we've got all the latest classes. Here we go. Now we see two new classes. We see session and user. Let's click on user first. So here we go, this is the user that we created. So there, let me go, there's the name. There is the username, which is the email. You can see the password itself is hidden. So we don't actually get to see that. And then the uh, email there. And we've also got this field called email verify, which I'll go through later on. And we've also got this other class here called session. So a session is a way of identifying a period of time where a user has uh, signed in 
or logged in. So you can see that this user, which is me, this is the one that signed in. I'm signed in for about a day and I have a session token here. And this is the identifier. It's a secret, so it's, it's almost like a password. This is a unique identifier which identifies me that's logged in to a particular machine, to a particular browser somewhere. So if I now go into here and let's look at, let's inspect and then let's go to application. Let me just get some space here. Here we go. Okay. And if I now go into local storage and then actually in null, here we go. So you can see parse in local storage, which is just a way for JavaScript to, to save some data locally in a browser. So you can see it's actually stored some data here for the current user. So parse slash my app ID slash current user. And if I try and show you what's there, you can see this is the details about the current user that parse knows has logged in, okay? And there is that session token that I showed you, okay? So within this browser instance, within this browser, Pars knows that this user has logged in. Let me go into the actual console here and kill this. Let's find out type parse.user.current. And then let's open it up in the console tab here. So you can see it's actually printed out the current user, okay? Wherever you are in your code, you can always find the currently logged in user by typing parse.user.current. Oh, not in this console tab. That's just, that's just the way JSBin works. But anyway, you can always find the current user by typing parse.user.current and that will return you the object which refers to the current user, the currently logged in user. Okay, now it knows that, it knows what the currently logged in user is by looking in local storage for the key parse my app current user. Okay, so we could try something. If I just went into local storage here, right clicked, hit delete. Okay, so let's hit clear and let's run it again. And now it's returning null. It's returning null because we've removed, because we manually deleted that information from the local browser, okay? So that's parse.user.current. Now if we try to sign up again, if we try to run this code one more time, let's just see what happens. Okay, so there you go, it returns an error message saying the account already exists for this username. That's because you can only run sign up once. Like, like any other site, if you're trying to sign up for it, it will only really work the first time. The second time, you don't need to sign up, you need to log in. And so that's what we'll do now. We'll show you how to log in. Let's find now type parse.user.login and then the username and the password and just like before it returns a promise and let's just type console.log and instead of logging the user there I'm just going to log parse.user.current which should be exactly the same as this returned user object okay let me just comment out the sign up Refresh the page. Now let's clear and hit run. Oh, apologies, it's not log in with a small case I, it's log in with a capital I. So let's try that one more time, okay. Okay, now, here we go. So now we have again returned the user object. 
Okay, so now we've logged in, which really means, you know, retrieve, you know, try and go to the server side. Is there a user called asim at codecraft.tv? If there is, does he have this password? If he does, then return the user object, but also set that information in the parse.user.current. So again, now if I go into the application section, there is my parse.myappid slash current user. So that's what's happening when we sign up with Pars. When we sign up with Pars, it's then checking to see if a user with that username doesn't already exist. And if it doesn't, it creates an account with that username and with that password. And then once that's set up, it then it then sets an item in the local storage for in the browser for Pars, the app ID, and the current user. Once that's set up, you can then use pars.user.current in anywhere in your code to get the currently logged in user. But in addition to that, let me close this out. But in addition to that, if the user has already signed up, you can then log in by passing in the email and password. This will then return the user object. I'm going to also set that and pars.user.current. So that's sign up and log in. The final thing you probably want to be able to support in your browser is log out. And that's pretty easy to do. You can do parse.user.logout. So now let me run that in the browser. Oh, hang on. Let's do a then. And now we've logged out. And again, if I check with parse.user.current, this is now null. And if I then go into the application tab, again, that parse my app ID current user has now been removed by parse. So now we've got the parse user object. We can actually set that parse user object as a relation on any other parse object. So for instance, a good example would be the blog post object. So if you remember, it was something like this. Parse object extend post. So you can do post is equal to new post. And we could have something like author is equal to user. In fact, let's let's go through a full example here. So let's uncomment the login code. Okay. Let's give ourselves some room. Okay. Okay. And then I, I, I let's just do a post or save here. So now when we log in, we're going to then just create a post object. I'm not going to bother setting the other data. I'm just going to set the author to the currently logged in user. Let me change that to user. And go on, let's add a log line here. And then let's just clear this and hit run. Good. Now let's go back to the parse dashboard, post, hit refresh. There you go, the first item. And then you can see, oh, let's refresh the whole page. So a new column comes through. Then you can see here is the user. So again, is a pointer to an existing user. So you can see, if I click through here, we'll find the user itself. So now you have a user object, you can associate it with any other object that you create, with any other instance that you create in PARS. And the other thing that you can do with users is just, well, query them. So you can query them the same way you can query any other class in Pars. So let's find all the users. In fact, let's just, let me just copy and paste some code to save time. Okay, so this is just going to print out all the attributes of these users so now let me clear hit run get some space here 
So you can see it's actually printing out all the details about this user, including their session token and username and uh, a bunch of other, well, what looks like private information. So you might think that's a bit of a security hole. So basically, as a PaaS user, you can only modify and save your own user object. You can by default query other users, but again, we can add additional security to even disallow that, and I'll show you that later on. But also, and most importantly, you cannot modify, you cannot save by default other users. You can only by default save your own user object if you are logged in or signed up.